Okay, magandang umaga po muli sa lahat. Good morning to all and we once again address this uh, this subject which as uh, Brother Ike said has been long running. When I set out to do this series at the beginning which goes back to 2018, I did not imagine it to be that long. Uh, I was... I knew it was going. It was going to be my a long series, but I did not even expect it will go beyond 100. It's now 139. My goal is to finish it at 150, but that's a human goal uh, that can go beyond. But anyway, we are dealing now with what is called buttressing doctrines, and we are dealing with this by way of an analogy to a structure. And without being precise in an engineering sense, I make the distinction between what is foundation. Foundation doctrines include the holiness of God and the justification by faith doctrine. Ito yung pundasyon, itong batayan, hindi ka makatatayo maliban na nandoon ang pundasyon. But then I speak also of buttressing doctrines. The purpose of a buttress, of a buttress is to stabilize a wall or some other parts of the building and uh, that is what buttressing doctrines are uh, and that includes two doctrines in particular that we are addressing we have done with perseverance perseverance of the saints uh, doon nakita natin yung dalawang panig god preserves the three persons of the godhead are all involved in the preserving of god's people and that is why there is going to be perseverance of the saints they will persevere because god preserves the evidence that you are being preserved is that you are persevering if you are not persevering then it only shows that God is not preserving you and you do not belong to God's people. So, ganun lang ang relasyon nung dalawa and that is something that we need to understand. We come now to the second of these buttressing doctrines which is called in theology assurance of salvation. Just to be reminded that this distinction is important in order that we may not go to the extreme of on the one side pinipilit natin that one should be a Calvinist for example before he can be holy that is not true either in scripture or in history but on the other hand uh, by emphasizing that there is that distinction we can make a, a, a good way of uh, dealing with Christians in their struggles with their Christian life. At ang titingnan natin ngayon ay ang assurance of salvation, katiyakan ng kaligtasan. Isn't it wonderful that this is something that we can say as part of the Christian blessing is that he can be sure of salvation. If only we can be sure of so many things in life, uh, sure of your uh, passing your test or sure of getting a job, sure of your health, uh, but those things are not sure. But of one thing, there is an assurance of, and there is assurance of salvation. So we are dealing here with an issue which we can put in question form, can we be sure of salvation now? Uh, in other words, it's now that we are talking about, can we be sure of salvation until the end? Uh, dyan nakasalalay ang katiyakan ng kaligtasan. And then, if we answer in the affirmative, the, qu the next question is, how is it attained? And the next question that divided even good Christians is, is it essential to face? That is, is it essential to be saved? That one is sure of salvation. So itong mga katanungan na sisikapin nating sagutin in two installments today and next Lord's Day, God willing. Now, in answer to this question, we know the Roman Catholic position is one of denial. They deny that there, there can be an assurance of salvation unless you are of the saintly kind, uh, very much in the elite of their ladder of sainthood or holiness, eh, hindi ka makakatiyak ng kaligtasan. And that is what you expect because if your salvation or your teaching of salvation is by morality, by good works, certainly you cannot be sure. You need to finish first your life before any verdict can be 
uh, can be done. So yan ang position ng Roman Catholic Church. Uh, it is not my purpose to deal with that now. Uh, I'm just stating and asserting that the Roman Catholic Church denies the doctrine of assurance of salvation because theirs is salvation by works. I am going to focus more on the evangelical distortion. So on the Roman Catholic Church, on the side of the Roman Catholic, it is denial. <laughs> on the side of the evangelicals, we have distortion, particularly on that side that believes in assurance of salvation. They believe it to be something easily achievable by simple faith. And by simple faith, they often mean something that is achieved by formula decision. Now, uh, that kind of assurance, let me tell you, is very impoverished. So, parang uh, uh, naging a very poor kind of assurance because it is very often reduced to certainty of going to heaven at death. That's how you often hear people make the assurance to their uh, prospects, uh, uh, soul winning, so witnessing, tinitrain sila na sabihin sa nanalangin ng kanilang dictated prayer, uh, do not doubt when you die you are going to heaven. That becomes their assurance. And let me tell you that is in fact very scarcely touched in the scriptures because that is not the main point of assurance of salvation. It is true that part of salvation is glorification. You're going to heaven in the intermediate state and when Christ comes again you will be glorified doon pa lang ang glorification when Christ comes again uh, but they have made this the major issue when it is not so their assurance is a very impoverished one on the other hand you have the decisionist assurance magkarelasyon ang dalawang ito uh, siguro magpinsan o magkapatid yung uh, kaya nagkakaroon ng impoverished ay dahil sa decisionism and what happens here is that this assurance is received by pronouncement of human formula. Kapag dumaan ka na sa kanilang formula of decision, as I've said, that soul winner is trained to give the assurance himself, and this is usurpation of the Holy Spirit. Romans 8.16 says, it is the Spirit himself. And that's an emphasis, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, that is, himself, who bears witness with our spirits that we are children of God. So, trabaho ng banal na espiritu ang pagbibigay ng katiyakan, hindi maaring ipronounce ng isang tao lamang ang pagbibigay ng katiyakan. Later, makikita natin mayroong part sa counseling, but in the, make, in the giving of assurance, that is not our part. So, by way of definition, a working definition, I hope, when we speak of assurance of salvation, we mean that a believer may attain, now take note, even the word may, may attain certainty of salvation in proportion to growing faith. And this is what I'm going to expound, itong definition na ito. Uh, so that is something that is possible now as faith grows. So that means two things or two propositions for now. We will have a third one next Lord's Day again, God willing. The first proposition is that it is possible, that's why it's May, it is possible for believers to have assurance of salvation. Maaring magkaroon na ng katiyakan, ng kaligtasan ang mga mananampalataya. And scriptures make that very clear. There are so many in the New Testament we can use, but I just want to use in particular the assertion of scripture in Romans 8 verse 1. There is therefore... Therefore, there is now no. Now, take note the now. Now, whenever Paul uses now, I tell my students this uh, many times, when you see Paul use the word now, he is talking of the now because Christ has come. It's not the now na kung tayo nagsasalita, wala tayong masabi, kaya magsasabi na lang tayo now. <laughs> now, ano na magsasabihin ko? Uh, but when Paul says now, he is referring to the what in theology is called the eschatological now, the now of the latter days, the now of fulfillment. Because Christ has come, and I'm talking of the first coming, 
Because Christ has come, what can the believers have? Uh, can be assured of no condemnation. Wala nang kahatulan. Kahatulan ng parusa. Yan ang condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Maring mawala ang nasa monitor, pero hindi <laughs> mawala ang, ang katotohanan ng isang mana ng palataya kay Kristo ay wala ng kahatulan ng parusa. So, you can add other scriptures that make that assertion. Besi besides assertion, there is exhortation. Ibig sabihin ay tinatagubilin ng kasulatan. Hinahamon ng kasulatan na magkaroon tayo ng katiyakan. You have that in 2 Peter 1 verse 10. Therefore, wherefore the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. Now, this is preceded by Peter's challenge for Christians to grow, to have knowledge, to your knowledge, add virtue, add this, add this, add this. In other words, have a growing Christian life. And in order for you to do that, you need to have assurance and also take note, and I'll deal with this later in the second lesson perhaps, ay pinagbaligtad yung order ng calling and election. In the reality, what comes first? Election or calling? Of course, election because it's from eternity past. Calling is your experience of the gospel becoming effectual to you. But in assurance, you need to be sure first that you are called before you can uh, assert that you are God's elect. Hindi ka magsisimula sa election. Nalala kung ang ako'y mag-interview ng isang bago pa lang ang church noon. Hindi ko sasabihin ang pangalan. <laughs> but ang tanong ko sa kanya, how do you know that you are a child of God? And his answer very confidently was, because I'm God's elect. <laughs> And in, uh, a little correction uh, made him realize that that is not the way. To assurance, you need to be sure that you are God's elect by something else. You do not begin with asserting that you are God's elect. And that's what Peter is exhorting here. Make sure of your calling. Talaga bang tumugon ka na sa Ibanghelyo? At ibig sabihin niya, naging mabisa sa iyo ang Ibanghelyo. Doon mo malalaman na ikaw pala'y hinirang ng Diyos. Kaya ka tumugon sa Ibanghelyo. So from this, both the assertion of Scripture as well as its exhortation, assurance, assurance is both a privilege to enjoy, meron na tayo niya na maari nating we can relish now, but also it is a condition to cultivate uh, by every believer. It is something that we may now enjoy, but it is something that we need to cultivate. Kailangan nating linangin para tayo ay mamuhay ng may katiyakan. So in this proposition, it is possible to have assurance now. Ang madalas na, na objection ay, hindi ba yan ay malalaman pa lang sa katapusan? Kaya tayo nagkakaroon ng assurance ay tungkol sa katapusan. Kaya tayo, wala tayong assurance na tayo ay papasa, malalaman pa lang natin pagtapos na. Uh, Malalaman pa lang natin na tayo ay magkakatrabaho kung uh, natanggap na natin sa katapusan ng interview at ng proseso na tayo ay tinatanggap na. Kaya sa katapusan, sumasangayon ako dyan that this is about the end. But what the New Testament teaches is something profound that many Christians still have to appreciate. That in the first coming of Christ, the end was advanced. That's the not yet part of it at least, not all, part of it has become already. The Christian life is the tension of already now and not yet. That's why we can enjoy things now. Christ's saving work is an end time fulfillment in advance. Kaya totoong sa katapusan pa, pero ang napakalalim na turo ng kasulatan ay yung katapusan na yun, ang bahagi ng katapusan ay uh, in advance ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. That means judgment day issues. Issues that are supposed to be, uh, to be decided on the judgment day yet. 
That's the end of days. Those issues have been settled in Christ in this age. Let me give you two, two end time uh, realities. The Holy Spirit in the Old Testament is the latter day promise of the coming of the Messiah. They looked at the future that when the Messiah comes, this age is going to be terminated and the new age is going to be the age of the Holy Spirit. But now in the New Testament, that has been modified because the Messiah has come, but this age is still continuing, but the future age reality has broken in. Parang pinasok na ang panahong ito. Sa halip na totally magkahiwalay sila, sa halip ng papatuloy pa ang panahong ito, pero sinimula na ang future, ang uh, panghuling, uh, panghuling mga panahon. At ito ay magpapatunayan sa katotohanan na isang pagpapala ng mga mana ng palataya ay ang banal na Espiritu. That's why 2 Corinthians 5 verse 5 calls him as the pledge of what is to come. Ibig sabihin, may mga darating, pero nandito na yung nauna. Inuna na ang banal na Espiritu at higit pa riyan ay nandito ang tinatawag natin na justification. Justification is a judgment day verdict. Di ba? Kapag ikaw ay uh, nasa husgado, if you are in, in court, you are... The justification is a judgment day verdict. Dapat yan ay sa panahon pa ng paghahatol. Pero, kay Kristo nang siya'y namatay sa krus at sino mang sumampalataya sa kanya, parang in advance na. What you are supposed to get on the judgment day yet has now become a judgment on Christ. And when you are in Christ, you already are justified. Yun ang point ng no condemnation. Instead, Romans 3 tells us He did this, that is, He sent Christ to be the propitiation of our sins to demonstrate His righteousness at the present time. So makikita niyo yung sinasabi niya sa context ay kung ano yung sa katapusan pa, naging present na, naging kasalukuyan na so as to be just, that is God's justice is established and justify the one who has faith in Jesus. So the judgment day is supposed to be the day when God's justice is going to be displayed in all its glory. But in the cross of Christ, that is advanced. And when anyone believes in Jesus Christ, the judgment day verdict has already passed on him. Instead of condemnation, as he deserves, he is justified, but in the process, God remains just and can justify a sinner. So, yung nagsasabi na, sa katapusan pa natin malalaman, totoo yun, pero hindi nila makita, ang katapusan, yung bahagi nun ay ginawa ng kasalukuyan. So Christ took the judgment day condemnation and wrath against sinners. So that means nothing remains for believers in Him. No more wrath. A wrath is the day of wrath. Remember judgment day, uh, Romans 2.6, it's a day of wrath. But that wrath is now poured out on Jesus. Condemnation is meted out on Jesus so that believers in Christ, in union with Him, have received in Christ that judgment and that wrath so that what remains for them is no more wrath, no more judgment of condemnation, but justification. Okay, kaya sa katapusan, pero ang katapusan naging kasalukuyan na kay Yesu Cristo. So, in this... Uh, profound New Testament teaching that Christ's saving work is an end-time fulfillment in advance, uh, future glory is inaugurated now in Christ for believers. Yung panghinaharap pa na kaluwalatian nagsimula na. Hindi pa lubos. Wala pang kalubusan. Pero nagkaroon na ng kasalukuyan. 
And it is manifested in a life now for the kingdom of Christ. That's why the kingdom is now here. Although not yet manifest to the world, the world does not recognize the kingdom. But believers recognize the kingdom, that it is now a reality. That is why we pray in the Lord's Prayer, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So what is a future is now reality and we can pray for it to be to show its active presence in our lives at hindi lang yan the christian life is fighting against sin foreshadowing future sinlessness yung sinlessness wala pa ngayon pero bakit ang kristiyano ay lumalaban na sa kasalanan sapagkat hindi na master ang kasalanan sa kanya Hindi na amo, hindi na nagahari. The sin no longer reigns. How can that be? Because he now has another king. So what is in the future sinlessness today, though not yet sinlessness, has become fighting against sin. And we can experience even now some victory over sin. At yan ang point ni John in First John now we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when He is revealed, we shall be like Him for we shall see Him as He is. And everyone who has this hope in Him purifies Himself just as He is pure. So take note, the, note of the future. Everyone who has this hope, may pag-asa pag sinabi mong hope dun sa darating pa lang, pero yung dahil sa darating na yun, nag-umpisa na ang pagpapakasakdal, pagpapakadalisay ng isang mananampalataya. Nang, ibig sabihin niyan, yung tungkuli ng mananampalataya, the believer must seek that assurance of salvation to drive his life of holiness. So this is the reason why I call this buttress. It stabilizes. Uh, kapag wala ka nito, you're on shaky ground. You will easily give in to doubts and to uh, struggles that you seem never to uh, get victorious over is because of lacking that assurance. So uh, take note, this assurance is not just that of going to heaven when you die, dahil katapusan pa rin yun, katapusan ng buhay. Ang sinasabi natin, dito pa lang, nandito na ang mga pagpapala ng kaligtasan. So that's the first proposition. Uh, the second proposition is more controversial. It is possible for a true believer to lack assurance. Kanina sinabi natin, it is possible for a believer to have assurance. And we should seek that assurance. Now here, nagkaroon ng division between the reformers and the Puritans on this. And I'll show you where I stand on. According to the Reformation position, remember the Reformers were very much in controversy with the Roman Catholics. And because the Roman Catholics denied altogether assurance of salvation, the Reformers were pushed to the other side that they made it essential to saving faith. Ang sinasabi nila ay kung ang, ang, ang assurance hindi lang posible kundi kailangan Hindi totoong saving faith kung walang assurance of salvation because that means you are doubting uh, the saving grace of God. Now, the Puritans were more nuanced in this question. They made a distinction between assurance of the gospel and assurance of faith. So, pinag-iba nila yan. Ano yung sinasabing assurance of the gospel? The assurance of the gospel is pertaining to the truth of Christ in the gospel. Should a Christian be assured of the gospel? The answer is yes, if he has faith, he should know that Christ alone is Lord and Savior. And he knows that the gospel is Christ dying for my sin, rising from the dead to be my Lord. Now, this is of the essence of faith. So, makikita natin, hindi nila dini-deny that there is something in faith where assurance is essential to. That is, assurance of the gospel. But they made the distinction of assurance of faith. 
assurance of faith is pertaining to the certainty of my faith. So, tiyak akong si Kristo lang ang Panginoon, tiyak akong si Kristo lang ang tagapagligtas, tiyak ako na siya'y namatay para sa makasalanan, na buhay na muli at siya'y Panginoon. Tiyak ako doon, pero tiyak ba ako sa aking pananampalataya? Totoo bang ako'y nanampalataya na? Now, this is where the Puritans, I would say, excel the Reformers. Because the Reformers were controversialists uh, predominantly, their interest was to show the Roman Catholics to be in error. Kaya natulak sila dun sa kabila. The Puritans were pastors. Most of them were pastors and they had to deal with Christians in the reality of their struggles. And so when they read scriptures, they saw these new ones that the Reformers did not see. That one can be sure of Christ but not sure of one's faith. Because assurance of the gospel is objective, kung ano yung nandoon, assurance of faith is reflexive. Ibig sabihin, you're reflecting on your own faith. Talaga bang nananampalataya ako? Now, this is not of the essence of faith. You can be sure of Christ, but some believers who are true believers are not sure of their own faith or they may doubt. So I think the Puritan distinction is more pastoral on believers struggle with self-doubt. It is reflective of the believer's experience. Yan ang nararanasan natin bilang mga mananampalataya. May mga panahon ng pag-aalinlangan. May panahon na hindi natin pinag-aalinlanganan si Kristo, pero nag-aalinlangan tayo sa ating sarili. And the Puritans saw that. That's why they made this very, uh, very important distinction pertaining to assurance. So, pagdating sa Puritan distinction, uh, scriptures we find are on the side of the Puritans on this because the scriptures distinguish between the state of salvation, that is, of being saved, and the consciousness of it. So in other words, one can be saved because he's a believer but may not be conscious in himself of that salvation because of many doubts. And if I can give one thing, uh, makikita natin ng distinction ng by this we know that we have come to know. Now that's not tautological, hindi ito uh, useless repetition. Ang sinasabi ni John ay, there is a way of knowing that we know. That's assurance. Knowing is Knowing God is salvation. Knowing that we know is assurance. So you see the distinction is scriptural. And there is the reality of the fluctuation of assurance. Ito ang delikado doon sa walang flak, wala, binigay lang ng soul winner. Yun lang ang tumatak sa kanya. Pag ako'y namatay, pupunta ako sa langit. So he has deprived himself or the soul winner has deprived the person of the dynamics of assurance, which is fluctuation. Scriptures exhort believers to press for full assurance. Now, why do we need full assurance? Because there are times they are not full. There are times that we struggle. So, Colossians 2 verse 2, and there are many more in Hebrews especially, uh, the plea and the exhortation for the full assurance. Full assurance of understanding. So what we see here is that as holiness is proportioned to assurance, believers must seek growing assurance. Now if assurance is growing, that means it's not static. It's dynamic. It can grow. It can decline. It can be full. It can be lost. Pwedeng mawala ang katiyakan ng isang mana ng palataya. Eh, anong halaga nito? Well, by, by way of caution, static assurance, yung walang paggalaw, dahil binigay lang ng isang soul winner, ay peligroso, eh, mapanganib. Anong panganib na dala niyan? One peril is fideism. It is reduced to fideism. Fideism means faith in faith. 
Makikita mo to sa method nila, sa uh, the decisionism. Pagkatapos mag-pray, ng, uh, prayer, sinner's prayer, anong itatanong? Eh, hindi itatanong, talaga bang si Kristo ang tagapagligtas mo? Talaga bang si Kristo ang Panginoon mo? Naniniwala ka bang talagang siya ay namatay para kahalili ng mga kasi? Hindi yun ang itatanong. Ang itatanong, o oh, nanalangin ka ba talaga? Ibig sabihin, binabalik sa kanya. Uh, and it becomes, because I prayed a sincere prayer, therefore, I am a Christian. At para matiyak lang, lagay mo yung date. Uh, date sa Bible mo. At pag nilagay mo, kailan ka nun mag-doubt, balik ka sa date na yun. Ayan, ganitong date, ako ay tumanggap sa Panginoon. So, it removes the dynamism because it has made assurance a matter of faith in faith. Uh, but faith, that is, faith in faith is a self-contradiction. Faith by its very nature is self-abandonment. You abandon anything of self to trust in Christ alone. That's faith. So to make the person reflect on how sincerely he prayed, how Honestly, he accepted Christ. That is to come back to self instead of looking to Christ. Ang lagi kong analogy dyan, and narinig nyo yun to, I'm sure, yung isang pulubi na humihingi ng limos at nakita niya ang isang taong dumudukot sa bulsa na mukhang maglilimos sa kanya. Anong iisipin ng taong pulubi Hindi siya titingin sa kamay niya, napakaganda ng anggulo ng aking kamay. Hindi ito matatanggihan kasi napakaganda ng aking pagsahod. No, ang tingin niya nandun sa magbibigay. Mukhang magbibigay ang taong ito. So nakatutok siya doon, that's faith. Ang ginagawa ng decisionism na nagre-resulta sa fideism ay tinitingnan kung paano ka nanalangin, Paano ka tumanggap? Paano ka uh, gan, ang ganitong ginawa mo? So sa halip na nakatingin kay Kristo, nakatingin sa sarili. And that's fideism. And then it becomes a formula. It is rendered incapable of dynamic motion of Christian assurance. Kagaya rin ang mga formula, uh, kung anong formula, immovable na yun. Uh, that's a static formula. The danger lies in muting what we described, what we discussed last week as the alarm system. Uh, pinapatahimik yung alarm system of true assurance. You see, if you live a life distant from God, if you're a true Christian, that alarm system is supposed to ring loud, to call your attention. It may be by way of doubt. It may be by way of uh, fear. But that alarm system will sound off. Pero dahil sa static assurance, tinanggal, pinatahimik yung alarm system. Yan ang peligro niyan. Genuine faith may be present amid self-doubt or unbelief. And the one thing that we see here is the man whose son was healed. When he was challenged, do you believe? He said, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. So you see here the mixture of believing and yet still struggling with unbelief and with doubt. So, sa isang pangangailangan ng good counselor, and here is where the Puritans excel. And... I am sorry to say that much of the counseling I hear today do not apply what the Puritans have called cases of conscience. Uh, ngayon, very professional ang itinuturo. The Puritans being pastors counseled Christians in their doubts, in their depression, in their distresses. So, anong mga uri ng cases of conscience? Ang madalas, kasama ang fear of committing the unpardonable sin. So, nababasa nila sa kasulatan that if you have blasphemed the Holy Spirit, 
you will not be pardoned either in this age or in the age to come. And some Christians will come to you and some have come to me fearing that because of the gravity of their sin, they have committed the unpardonable sin. How do you counsel that? Well, many pastors do not even know how to explain blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. It's not our purpose now to explain that, but I'm just saying that this is one struggle that a mature counselor should be, ready, uh, should be ready to counsel. Then you have sense of defeat by besetting sin. Dalapit sa iyo mga Kristiyano, meron silang isang kasalanan na palaging uh, nakikita nilang sarili nilang talunan. At nag-aalinlangan sila sa kanilang sarili. Paano ka magpapayo sa ganong uh, sitwasyon? Then there is lack of sense of God's love or presence. So nag-worship siya, nakikita niya yung iba na nandun yung joy ng kanilang worship. At siya'y uuwi na uh, lulugulugo dahil wala siyang naranasan ng presensya ng Diyos. At magkakaroon siya ngayon ng pag-aalinlangan. Then, you have fierce attacks of doubts and temptations. John Banyan spoke so much or wrote so much of these attacks on his thoughts of doubts, even blasphemous thoughts. May paano ka makikipagpayo sa ganoong mananampalataya? Ang punto lang nito ay hindi totoo na ang assurance ay once and for all. What Christ has done and the blessings of salvation like justification, they are once for all. Some blessings grow and among those would be assurance. Assurance may grow, assurance may decline. So there is more maturity in dealing with honest doubts than the smug comfort of static assurance. And I have seen the distinction of the two. I have dealt with people who are just so sure, kahit na anong sabihin mo, mali ang buhay mo, inconsistent. At sasabihin nila, tinanggap ko na si Kristo, tapos ang usapan, uh, tiyak ako na pupunta sa langit pag ako yung namatay. Uh, but they don't show any reality to their supposed faith in Christ. Mas mabuti pa yung mananampalataya na talagang Iniiyak ka niya yung kanyang pag-aalinlangan. Nagdududa siya sa kanyang sarili. Hindi siya nagdududa kay Yesu Kristo, kundi nagdududa siya sa kanyang sarili kung talagang mananampalataya siya. And that's the kind of person you will find yourself perhaps counseling uh, in order to bring to the right assurance. So ito yung dalawang propositions na tinignan natin ngayon. And next week, we will look at the third and last. But the right thought to have this yield in us is to say what a comfort to possess assurance now of salvation in Christ. It is not automatic but by faith. And magiging resolution niya, I will seek to grow in my faith which grows assurance and it will drive my holiness. Yung maling pag-iisip because of remaining sin Assurance of my salvation means never giving place to any doubt, regardless of my present state. That's the smug assurance that is dangerous. Magdudulot ito ng behavior na I find it comforting that I do not have to struggle with doubt, even when I see no growth of holiness. Those without this assurance are just weak. So, yan kanyang iniisip. Ang assurance ay ang aking pinangahawakan. Kaya kahit walang ebidensya ng kabanalan, meron akong panahon na tumanggap kay Kristo at yun ang parang tapos na ang usapan and that is very dangerous. So my challenge is seek growing assurance. But help, not judge, those who are weak in their assurance. So pag sinakita mong isang Kristiyano na nag-aalinlangan, Huwag mo agad sabihin, ah, galing sa jablo yung pag-aalinlangan mo. That may be the alarm system that God has given to us so that we may not go far away from God because He makes us sense the doubt, the fear, in order to bring us back to Him. So let this uh, be our 
exhortation, as the writer of Hebrews tells his readers, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. There's your terminology of full assurance. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. So, yan ang hamon sa bawat isa sa atin. In order to stabilize our holiness, we need assurance. Assurance is a possibility now that we need to seek, but assurance is dynamic. It can grow. It can decline. That's why we need to heed the exhortation. Any question? Uh, I. Uh, Doon po sa difference between reformers and puritans, just to be clear po, hindi naman po dininay ng puritans na assurance is in some sense the essence of, of the essence of faith. Parang nag, may nuance lang sila of what is of the essence of faith and what is not. That's what I said. <laughs> That's what I said. Na, uh, assurance of the gospel is of the essence of faith. And the Puritans taught that. Ang pagkakaiba ng Reformers at Puritans, the Reformers did not make the distinction that the Puritans made. The Puritans made the distinction between assurance of the gospel, which is of the essence of faith, and then assurance of faith, which is not of the essence of saving faith. Ibig sabihin, pwede kang mag-doubt sa faith mo pagamat hindi ka nagda-doubt sa Ibanghelyo. So, the Puritans made that pastoral distinction where the Reformers failed to do so. Again, because of their context of controversy with Roman Catholicism. Go ahead. A different question. Uh, sa confession po natin, sinasabi na yung uh, Lord's Supper was instituted for the confirmation of the faith of believers. So para po siyang nagdadagdag or nagpapalago uh, ng assurance. Paano po nagagawa ng Lord's Supper yon At paano po gawin ng isang mananampalataya ang Lord's Supper in such a way na makukuha niya yung ganong klaseng pakinabang sa pag-observe mo? Yes, and we had a lesson on the uh, sacraments of the church. And the way it happens is, as a sacrament, Ang Lord's Supper is the perpetuation of God's covenant with us which results in three things. Dapat tatlong bagay ang laging kasama sa Lord's Supper. One is that it is memorial. Uh, inaalala mo ang ginawa ng Panginoong Isokristo kaya't naibabalik ka sa kanyang ginawa. Dahil dumarating ang panahon na tayo ay natututok na sa ating ginagawa and that is a formula for legalism. So the Lord's Supper brings you back to the real platform of our faith, Christ Memorial. And then it is a Eucharist, Thanksgiving. Uh, na, di ba nasabi natin, thankfulness is the greater motive than fearfulness. So saan yan na, na uudyok ay sa Lord's Supper at ang ikatlo ay communion. Uh, communion means you are having to deal with Christ by faith what you do to the bread and the wine. As you are eating the bread, you by faith are feeding upon Christ spiritually. As you take of the wine, you by faith drink, that is participate in the effects of the blood of Christ. So... Tatlong, uh, isipin mo yung triangle, tatlong points. Uh, memorial, Eucharist or Thanksgiving, and communion. Uh, that will be for the confirmation of our faith. Uh, Brother Ferdy. Uh, Pastor, regarding uh, sa assurance of the gospel and, and assurance of faith, uh, parang medyo na-observe ko lang, na maraming nahuhulog doon sa assurance of the gospel Ka siguro kahit hindi lang yung parang na sa method ng decisionism kahit mga reformed uh, Christians uh, may mga na-encounter ako na parang mas doon yung emphasis nila pero yung knowledge nila doon ay halos hindi naman talaga na i-apply or nakikita sa kanilang 
karanasan kumbaga yun nga uh, in relation to sa mga past uh, ano regarding perseverance of the saints parang uh, yung emphasis is more on dun sa uh, security of uh, salvation parang ganun so uh, ang tanong ko po ay uh, minsan parang head knowledge parang ganun yung head knowledge uh, parang ganun po ba yun minsan ay dahil uh, yung knowledge niya sa gospel ay parang uh, yun na lang yung kanyang ano pero parang wala siyang gano'ng pagdududas. Thank you. Pwedeng mahulog ka sa yun na nga, uh, intellectual faith. Uh, may alam ka and you take the knowledge as already your faith. But again, uh, remember the three components of faith you learned from GMA ay uh, noticia, knowledge, Ascensus, ascent, and fiducia, trust. So, na, nahinto sila sa knowledge. They know the gospel and they think that's faith. But there are people, maybe thousands of them, in the churches who have a knowledge of the gospel, but they don't trust. They have no trust in the gospel. So, what we need is the knowledge, the ascent, yung kaalaman, Paniniwala, ascent, and then pananampalataya o pagtitiwala as uh, trust. Uh, do natin sila hamunin. Uh, uh, you remember in John Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress, a character named Talkative. And uh, when he was asked about the gospel, he can talk endlessly about it. And then when he was asked, how is this true to you? Uh, ang sagot niya basically ay, ay walang personalan. <laughs> so, eh, ganyan ang iba. Na, alam na alam nila ibanghelyo, wag mo lang personalin. Eh, yun ang problema nga. Well, hindi personal sa iyo, wala kang trust. Eh, hindi faith iyon. Uh, dish from online. Hi, Pastor. We have a few questions from online. Ang una pong tanong ay, can you please expound further in a simpler version of the meaning of Romans 8.1? I am just a beginner in studying God's Word. Well, thank you. And it's a good question. Uh, therefore, there is now no more condemnation. Yung dapat na malaman natin no condemnation ay sa future pa, sa judgment day pa. Pero sinasabi ni Paul, now na. <laughs> Ngayon na. I, we the, we can know that there is no condemnation. So that's why it is an assurance for those who are in Christ. Uh, no condemnation, condemnation and justification. These are judgment day verdicts. Parang nililitis sa uh, korte. Pagtapos na ang paglilitis, saka palang ibababa ng huwes ang kanyang sentensya. Guilty or not guilty. Sa katapusan. Ang sinasabi ng Romans 8.1, Ibinaba na ang sentensya dahil kay Kristo. At ang sentensya sa mga mana ng palataya ni Kristo, not guilty. Yan ang isabi ng no condemnation. They are not guilty because of Christ. Not because they are not guilty of their own sins. But they are not guilty because of union with Christ. So, yun ang ibig sabihin ng Romans 8.1. Na ngayon pa lang, yung dapat ay sa araw pa ng paghuhukom, maari na nating matiyak na wala tayong katulan ng parusa. Uh, you said several? Go ahead. Another question po, Pastor. In an article regarding final justification, John Piper says, justification is a point like in geometry, a point where the Holy Spirit opens our blind eyes to see Christ for who He is and unites us to Christ by faith alone. In that instant, at that point, we pass from being under condemnation into God's being 100% for us. No virtue and no works in us brought about this new standing with God. Justification is instantaneous and unchanging. On the basis of the blood and righteousness of Christ alone, we are counted instantaneously as righteous and God is 100% for us from then on. 
We are connected with this new experience of acceptance with God. Uh, ju jump to the question. The question is, what are your comments or opinion on Piper's article in case you have well, read that it? That article of John Piper has, uh, has uh, elicited so much backlash from other Reformed Christians because he is talking of something that will have a final form or version than what it is now. And what he is misunderstanding is the objectivity of justification. Justification is objective, permanent, and legal, and therefore not changing. And the way some put it is that the saints in heaven are more secure, but not more righteous in terms of justification. They are not uh, they are more secure because we have still a lot of struggles here, but they are not more uh, righteous in the sense of justification because that righteousness of justification does not change. What changes are subjective blessings like what we are studying, holiness, sinlessness. These are final versions of sanctification, uh, but sanctification is growing and changing. But not justification. Uh, on that point, uh, that article, Piper is wrong, but he corrected himself after facing the backlash, clarified himself that para ding nangyari noon kay John MacArthur, may sinabi siyang siguro sa kabiglaan niya, and after a backlash, he uh, stepped back. Uh, that's what happened to John Piper. Uh, yes, Jean. Pastor, thank you for the lesson. It's really comforting and really gives energy for us to persevere uh, in our um, quest for holiness until the Lord comes. Pastor, I'm trying to make sense pa rin po yung, uh, the Reformation position when I was reading the handout uh, earlier. Uh, a reformation position and the Puritan distinction. Is it correct to, to say that the reformation position uh, focused on the objective, uh, 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 objective dimension of truth, but for the reform, uh, for, for the Puritans, they focus on both the objective and the subjective dimension of it as we experience. Uh, uh, as we as you said, the fluctuating assurance of our uh, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, is it that kind of reflection? Yes, to some extent some it is. Uh, but uh, remember that the reformers were putting forward a position that will be in diametrical opposition to the Roman Catholic position. Now, the Roman Catholic position has the doctrine known as implicit faith. What is implicit faith? Ang sinasabi ng implicit faith, you do not need to know what you believe. You just have to trust the church. So the church will believe for you. So the reformers uh, blasted that position by emphasizing explicit faith. Faith must know what it believes. Eh, nasobrahan sila, nasinabi nilang, it must also know the result of that salvation to themselves, therefore, uh, of the essence of faith is assurance. Uh, on that point, I will say that the reformers uh, went beyond, and it is the Puritans who recovered the balance by distinguishing assurance of the gospel and assurance of faith. They both fall under assurance of salvation. Uh, Pastor, mas, uh, mas kumikiling nga ako doon sa sinabi nyo rin, parang challenge na yata yun, na mas mabuti pa yung kristyano na parang siguro misa, nagdududa siya sa kanyang pananampalataya, kaysa naman yung parang talagang tiyak na tiyak siya, pero hanggang saan po ba yung parang pagdududang yun or hindi, hindi ka na ba hindi ka ba nakakasala din nun, or mali din naman yung para siguro <laughs> Uh, sa mo. Sorry. And that's why the 
writer of Hebrews uh, exhorts to full assurance precisely because there can be doubts. Uh, if doubts were not a reality of the Christian life, there would be no need for such exhortation. Kaya nag exhort tayo, kagaya rin na humihina tayo sa ating pananampalataya at uh, kinakailangan natin ng challenge, ng hamon na lumago pa sa pananampalataya, ganun din sa ating katiyakan. In our assurance, we decline. And because we decline, we need a challenge. Uh, and next week, we will consider what are those factors that uh, make assurance grow. So, yun yung sa third proposition natin. Sa two propositions pa lang natin ngayon, ang um, gusto ko lang i-emphasize ay huwag nating agad uh, uh, kundinahin ang isang taong maaring tutuong mananampalataya ngunit nagkakaroon siya talaga ng pag-aalinlangan. Pag sabihin nating nag-aalinlangan siya galing sa jablo yung pag-aalinlangan niya, uh, well, it may be, but uh, uh, it can also be, in many cases, God's alarm system. It's, in other words, it's working. God's alarm system is working when you go some distance from God in your life. The alarm will go off. And that means God is being merciful to His child uh, by making Him doubt. Kaya yung nga hindi nagda-doubt ay uh, katulad siya ng character na binanggit ko last week uh, si Mr. Ignorance na walang kaduda-duda na siya ay papapasukin sa Celestial City only to be rejected. And as I've said, John Bunyan said, and I saw that even on the door of the Celestial City, there was a way to hell. And that's what many professing Christians with smug assurance have. They believe they're going to heaven and that's all they have. Eh, pero pag sinabi nating assurance kasama doon yung God's love, the no condemnation, your prayer is heard. These are all objects of assurance. Sigurado ka bang kapag nananalangin kay pinapakinggan ka, paano ka mananalangin na pakikinggan ka ng Panginoon? Kung wala kang ganung katiyakan, tiyak na, na magdi-decline ng iyong prayer life. That's why assurance is a stabilizing doctrine for holiness. Uh, Ate Emma. Uh, this happened only yesterday, kaya napaka-timely nung lesson mo, Pastor. Of course, if you are ministering to an elderly loved one, gusto mo talaga may assurance of salvation siya. Especially because... Uh, yung news na namatay si Mercy Drilon, who is quite a figure in UPLB. Friend kasi niya yung Mercy Drilon. So, I was so hyped to to see na may assurance of salvation siya. Baka siya yung susunod na kukunin. <laughs> so, uh, we were talking about assurance of salvation. Pero coming from a Roman Catholic background, ganon nga siya. You, you can never be sure about your salvation until you face the Lord. So, anything na about assurance of salvation, ang kanyang belief, hindi mo yan malalaman while you are still alive. So, when I became Reformed, sabi ko, alam mo yung gospel, dapat maintindihan mo. I am not ashamed of the gospel, it is the power of God unto salvation. Dapat maintindihan mo yung gospel. So, yun yung dinikdik ko ng dinikdik sa kanya. But now I see that I am like the Reformed and not have the pastoral heart of the Puritan na dapat pala titingnan mo rin yung where she is coming from. Now, as in the process of conversation, she was saying na, naitindihan ko naman eh, alam ko naman naman namatay si Christ. So sabi ko, so how come you are so fearful? How come you have so many doubts kung talagang assured ka? So, siguro ang tanong ko, Pastor, how would you at attack now? Or how would you uh, help a loved one have assurance of salvation? Alam mo yung gospel. Pero hindi niya nakikita yung condition niya. Like, sabi niya, nagtatights naman ako dun sa ano eh. So, it still not, it still works. So, ang hirap po, kasi kahapon lang namin ito na conversation. Kaya nung nakita ko yung lesson mo, sabi ko, 
Yeah, I yeah, still, kung, I'm, I'm being smug, I'm guilty about this. Pero kung ang kanyang inaasahan ay katal, katulad po nung sinabi nyo, nagtatight siya, uh, ibig sabihin ay ang dependence pa rin niya ay sa kanyang ginagawa. He's still salvation by works, not the gospel. Uh, kahit nasabihin niyang, uh, I believe that Christ died for sinners, even Catholics can say that. Uh, and yet they believe in salvation by works. So if a person is still holding to salvation by works, he, he or she does not understand the gospel. So but she pal- said, eh, yun ang kwanya, she understands the gospel. That's ah, an assertion, pero pagkatapos ay sasabihin niyang dahil nagtatight siya, uh, that is a contradiction of believing in the gospel as the uh, basis of salvation. Hindi tayo pwede magbigay ng assurance uh, unang-unang, ito'y gawa ng Espiritu. Pwede tayong mag and next week's lesson is all about that. Uh, ano yung mga factors na ginagamit ng banal na Espiritu to give assurance. So, we can use those things for counsel, but we ourselves cannot pronounce assurance to an individual, especially one who we are not sure is a gospel believer. Yeah. I think wala siya doon sa trust na level of the yung tatlo po. Oh, maring may knowledge, maring yeah. may assent, yes. pero wala pa yung trust at mm-hmm. hindi pa yun. Pero wag natin to na step by step. These are not steps. Na, or nasa step 1 ako, knowledge. Step 2, hindi ganun ang faith. Kundi we present the gospel and in the process that the Holy Spirit guides, it goes through knowledge, assent, and trust. So, ang reaction niya, chinoon out na niya ako. <laughs> so, so uh, siguro next time I uh, talk more about Christ and what He has done. Al Jin. Pastor, on doubt, I don't know whether ito ay makukover ng next week's lesson but you said na yung doubt is god's alarm system but is it possible also that your doubt is also your growing sense of your own sinfulness and could be considered growth in holiness well depending on uh what what is the reason for that doubt may mga Doubt na result ng sinabi ko nga, going a, a distance from the Lord, uh, living a life of distance from the Lord, ay magkakaroon ka nga ng doubt. Pero kung ang ating doubt ay uh, you sense your unworthiness as you pray and you may be attacked by the devil, that's where the devil's uh, schemes come in, dun sa 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Uh, where he will give you a sense of guilt uh, that therefore God will not hear you. Who are you to pray? And so doon papasok yung mga doubts na maybe uh, demonic inspired uh, because it, uh, it makes us stop a holy uh, duty. Yung doubt na alarm system is it drives us back to God because we're going far. Ayun yung alarm system para palapitin ka dahil lumalayo ka na. Ang doubt na demonic inspired ay patigilin ka sa ginagawa mong kabanalan kasi nga nag, pinagdududa ka. Uh, oh, di ba nagkasala ka? Ba't ka mananalangin? So tumigil ka ng panalangin Eh, that's demonic inspired uh, the, na rather than uh, the alarm system. So even that takes maturity to understand. Last two. Uh, Tita Te. Medyo, <laughs> salamat, makamagandang umaga. Ang tanong ko, dahil sa dami na mga lumalabas na mga salita, mga doctrines, mga kung ano-ano, mga kaisipan ng tao, nagi, nagigi, yung buhay, na, buhay ng totoong kristyano, nagiging messy lalo. Kaya, ano, sa math kasi, merong sinasabi ito, kaya ako naiintindihan, may sinasabi na simplification process. 
bago namin masolve yung equation, you have to simplify it by elimination, by cancellation of ano. In the end, simply simply lang pala noong ano nung equation. So, hindi kaya ano ang role ng Holy Spirit sa ganito? Kasi hindi naman lahat yon ay oo, nananiniwala, naniniwala din ako na ang ibarong ginagamit ng Panginoon para sa ating ikagaganda ng ating relasyon sa Kanya. Pero karamihan din ay para lang tayo i-agitate. So ang aking ano, ano ang role ng Holy Spirit para lalo nating maintindihan. Ngayon, meron din pang isang concept ang tinatawag ko, kaparis nung naintindihan ko lang yon nung sinabi sa akin na yung tungkol sa speed, speed at saka velocity. Ang, ang tingin ng tao, pareho lang yun. Hindi siya pareho. Kasi pareho silang may numbers, yung isa may direction. Yung velocity ang may di direction. Uh, pwede kayang gamit, pwede ba itong magamit ng Holy Spirit o ginagamit ba ito para sa ating pananampalataya para magkaroon tayo ng totoong assurance of salva salvation, ay uh, mag, ang, ang ating direction ay tungo sa kaluhatian, the holiness of God, instead na para tayong scalar quantity. Na yun lang, figure lang siya and nothing more. Whereas yung isang, uh, uh, meron siyang direction. So yung direction na yun na ano, So, ang aking tanong talaga ay tungkol sa yung the power of the Holy Spirit and claiming the promises of God. Okay, maraming salamat po. Uh, of course, the Holy Spirit is the main source of assurance of salvation, but the Holy Spirit uses means or factors for that assurance. Next week, we will consider those four factors. Again, the 1689 Confession, added one to the three of the Westminster Confession. Uh, kaya meron silang apat na factors uh, we will consider next week. Uh, so it's the Holy Spirit who gives the assurance and the direction is to glorify Christ because that's the work of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said is to glorify Himself. At ginagamit niya yung mga factors ng God, the Lord's promise, the atonement of Christ, the evidences of the gospel, and the testimony, direct testimony of the Holy Spirit to our spirits that we are children of God. So, titingnan natin yun next week po. Pero kung math ang gusto niyo pag-usapan, yung anak ko ang kausapin niyo. <laughs> uh, last point. <laughs> last point. So, yeah, yes, Tish. Pastor, okay lang ba pong two more? Okay. We have two questions here, both from, uh, I'm not sure if this is the same for beginner in studying God's Word in Taupo. Ang tanong niya po is, what is the difference between the Puritans and the Reformers? And we have another question as well. The Reformers pertain to the people who, uh, who went out of the Roman Catholic Church in the 16th century and challenged the papal position and doctrines kaya ang they spawned the reformation of the 16th century ang unang tinawag sa kanila ay protestants uh, because they protested against the Roman Catholic position but later on in history they are labeled because yung ginawa nila naging reformation they are labeled as reformers so this is 16th century the Puritans were those of the Church of England ministers who wanted purity in doctrine and church life of the Church of England, some of them remained in the Church of England. Others went out, many went out of the Church of England, but they were united by this common denominator na they want the church to be pure in doctrine and life. So, magkaiba ito. Yung isa lumabas sa Roman Catholics, yung Puritans, most of them lumabas sa Church of England or the Anglican Church. It, so, they are confined to England, ang Puritans. The Reformers were European. 
The last question po is, what does it mean practically to have Jesus Christ as Lord? How should we live our life each day? Well, that's the whole thing about holiness. Uh, holiness is living the life where Jesus Christ is your Lord. But it will have a beginning. The beginning is called conversion. Conversion is when one abandons what he has trusted for his life and salvation, whether that's religion, self-work, or saints, or sacraments, whatever. He abandons them in order to trust in God's way alone, which is Jesus Christ. That's conversion, and that conversion means his turning point is to have Jesus as his Lord and Savior, whom he trusts and uh, abandons his life to. But from then on, he lives what he has begun. He lives as one who is under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And that's all about holiness. Next week, we will look at the factors that make for assurance of salvation. Let's close in prayer. Dakila naming Diyos, aming mahabaging Ama, muli kami nagpapasalamat sa mga natutunan namin, and especially in the matter that should buttress our holiness, and that includes assurance of salvation. We thank you that even now we can be sure of our salvation in Jesus Christ, precisely because when Christ did what he did in his first coming, he advanced at least in partial form the last days and the judgment day so that those who are in Christ have no more condemnation because it was meted out on the Lord Jesus as our substitute. And thus may we seek that assurance in Christ and yet it is also possible for one to have true and genuine saving faith and lack assurance. And there are ways of gaining that assurance. So grant, Lord, that we may not be those who are judgmental of those who may be weak in their faith. Instead, realize that in your wisdom, you have given us, given us true believers, an alarm system that may go off to alert us to things in our lives which may be destructive of us. So we thank you for your wisdom and do prepare us as we conclude this consideration of assurance of salvation and may it be a driving factor to our holiness, living a life under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So we give you back the praise and the honor and may you Turn it into our spiritual prophet, for we pray all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.